Hi, and welcome to this week's art talk. So welcome to my workspace. And in a week, it's going to be Art Basel, which is the most exciting uh, time of the year for a lot of people in uh, this area. And so a lot of the newspapers start publishing articles about art, which I always find fascinating. It gives me endless hours of enjoyment. And there was a, in the NZZ magazine the other week, there was a great article here in German, which I'm going to try very hard to put into English for you. Um, and this man states, there are no objective criteria for good art. Big letters. There are no objective criteria for good art. Who is this man? The international leading art expert, Magnus Resch, tells you why art is rarely a good investment, but it's, despite being doing this, it's worthwhile to collect it and how you start an art collection. Well, first of all, of course, I know a headline is always meant to attract attention. And this headline definitely got mine. There are a lot of objective criteria for great art. The problem is what people keep confusing, and this is very important to say this, is there is art, an artist trying to create good art, and then there is the art market which is where Art Basel sits quite firmly. It is a big market. And I'm very aware that if I want to be part of the market, I have to do certain things. I have to go and schmooze the right people. I have to go and talk nicely to people everywhere, galleries, whatever. But, and then of course, I have to create art that has a certain brand, a clear identity. But then I feel like I'm basically making furniture. And I want to create art and not something usable or that fulfills a certain thing because art has meaning. So first of all, there's my critique on this headline. This man obviously has not read the criteria for aesthetic judgment by Immanuel Kant, where Immanuel Kant lists quite clearly various objectives for evaluating whether art is good. And the price is nowhere. The price is what interests you if you're spending money. Fair enough. But it is not a criteria for looking at art and saying whether it is good or not. It is saying whether the artist has been lucky enough to meet the right people, be taken on by the right galleries, and has the right kind of marketing and PR behind him. But very little about the work of art. I could go through the whole list that, of topics that Immanuel Kant listed. There are a lot of other criteria for measuring art. For example, Hegel wrote hello too. But unfortunately, Hegel's are very complicated and not even my 83-year-old art mentor can understand them. And he's got a bigger brain than me. So, you know, hey. Uh, Immanuel Kant's I can work with, and I do work with them. One is the singular totality of a piece of work, the unavailability and purposelessness of, of art, the self-referentiality of the work, the openness of the work, the alterity, otherness of the work, the historicity of art, the communicability of art, the fulfilment of art, the expressive character of art, the negativity of art, and its relationship to reality. Now, I know I've just run through those and you probably haven't got a clue and you've really forgotten half of them. The point I'm trying to make is there are objective criteria for art. Of course, to even start looking at a work of art or thinking about the criteria for a work of art, you need to like the work. And Kant had a sentence for that as well. He said, you have to have, the artwork has to generate unintentional pleasure Otherwise, it will not be looked at. And what is not looked at does not exist. So you have to like the first, the work of art first. In which case, this chappie here is quite right. He says it several times. You have to like the picture. I agree. That's the first step. And then you have to start thinking about the next step. Why do I like it? What do I know the criteria? What criteria does it fulfill? A work of art is always made of three things, colour, 
meaning light and dark, form, meaning space, and movement. Art is always a question of form, and form determines meaning. We need to strengthen the force of form so people can once again perceive and understand form and concepts of form themselves. Life is all about form, and I know this, and I'm very sorry that I've made these art talks without an outro, without giving you a full proper little box without a prompter so that I have my words in front of me instead of looking down. These are all questions of form and I have slipped up doing this, but I felt it was important, my information, to give it to you and I didn't have the time to put it into a nice form. However, shout out to Tom Oxley here, I have now made an outro for you so that my art talk has a bit more form because we all need more form in our lives. Form is how we give our lives shape, how to, we know how, what to do or what not to do. So, art is about what gives meaning, not what is useful. How something is made is way more important than what it depicts. Hegel said, and this is quoted freely, to find one's own in the other, so when you look at a work of art, you find yourself in the work of art, and to feel at home in it is the basic movement of the spirit. When I come back from the other, the work of art, I am different from before. I am another, because now I have that work of art in me as well. And so the recipient of a work of art, that means you looking at it, so when you go to Art Basel, think about this, you need to have the will to look at art, as in you want to look it up, which I'm assuming you've got, otherwise you wouldn't be at Art Basel. You need to practice, uh, you need to have practice in artistic perception. You can learn this from studying my friend Kant. And when you look at a work of art, try and think about this. Is there something to see there? Is it a space I would like to walk around in? Is it a space I would like to enter into? Because as I said before, a work of art must generate unintentional pleasure. Otherwise it won't be looked at. So, what else does my friend here say, Magnus Risch? Um, he said, you need by art because art is inspiring. And there I can also quote you a beautiful quote from Martin Heidegger, the German philosopher. Great art gives us eyes for something that we could not see before. So has that work opened your eyes? Have you seen something differently? Have you experienced another emotion that you didn't have? Small art only changes the form of what already exists. So what else does he say? He goes on about great art. He says, they did a survey, what makes great art, good art. How can you do a survey on what makes good art if you don't see that there are any criteria? Good art, in this case, means marketable art, means art with a price. And art is not money. Art is meaning. He does say a true sentence, of course. He says art at the Art Basel is not better than art from an unknown artist, which is nice for me because I'm the unknown artist here, of course. Um, and he says it's important to buy what you like, which, okay, I can go with that as well. So it's not all bad, but I just get a bit upset every now and then when people say there are no objective criteria for good art. There most certainly are. And in the old days, artists knew them. Kandinsky, Ka um, Monet, Manet, all these people, they knew what these objectives were, these criteria. They were trying to make art that was elevated you more to build on what was already good and make something better, not new. Newness was never a value in art. It was always trying to elevate what already existed into another level, to make something more beautiful, more meaningful than what there was. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. All if you best. enjoyed this art talk, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye.